have a great ability to distill the various viewpoints that are here. I know one senator has told me he's never uh, confronted an issue where there are so much polar viewpoints about this. The park test um, is something that was embraced initially by 26 states. At this point, uh, 17 of those states have pulled out or down to nine. I've said many times I think one of the great advantages, I love Arkansas, one of the great advantages of being in the middle of the United States, being a small state, is that you get to learn from the mistakes or the ventures of other states. And I think that that is what's been happening and is happening with the park test, with the uh, increase from 26 states to nine states. Uh, we're hearing a, a number of the horror stories. And I know that there's going to be testimony today from teachers who say, well, it's not been as bad as, as speculation was. But the truth is, it has been bad throughout the country. And we'll, we'll hear some testimony also about some of the problems that have already been encountered within the first week. One of the most critical issues I think we have to look at, and we have conversations about this all the time in the interim education committee meetings and our regular education committee meetings, is that we have to address the poverty gap. If we have a significant poverty gap. No matter what we do in terms of putting NSLA money in, what we've seen the charts that says that really we're not doing anything to less than the state of New York has found out, and this is one of those examples that we can learn from because they've been doing the testing longer part of this. They have found that the poverty gap widens with the part test, specifically because of the keyboarding skills that are necessary talking about third graders having to type their essays into uh, a window, a little window on the computer, uh, and, and try and make sense of it if they don't have keyboarding skills. So it's not just, though, that they haven't been taught by the third grade for that. You also have the issue of students that do not have access at home to computers, home computers. They are going to be lacking in their keyboarding skills, and so that's what widens the poverty gap. Those who are who do not have that ability to Students. Some of the other stories that we've been hearing from around the country, uh, the head of the Chicago School District said in his case that to administer the park this year is absolutely not in the best interest of urban students. We've heard that in New Mexico, hundreds of students have protested by walking out. In New Jersey and other states, thousands have refused. Uh, just came across a, a statement today by the uh, the Indiana Superintendent of the Year, Rocky Killian, suggested to parents that they homeschool their children during testing week because he is so exposed to the exams. Now, as I've already pointed out, I know that there are plenty of other educators, credible educators, very well credentialed educators who will say the opposite, that it's that it is a good exam. But one thing that I would bring to your attention and point out is that I, I would dare say, and I don't think anyone has tried to contradict this has probably been uh, one of the more controversial issues in this session. Yet in the House, the, this bill was passed by 86 to one party. It was passed by a bipartisan collection because this issue, concern about what this is doing to our students and our teachers, uh, this cuts across political ideologies. Both conservative and liberal are, are hearing the same thing. Um, as I said, I, I want to go ahead and use some of my time to allow the, the ladies from the Guidance Council Association to give a 